is fantastic. With such an amazing coastline, it's no surprise that many of us fantasize about living in a wonderful home by the sea. We've got salt water in our veins. Us Brits just love being by the sea. We're drawn to it as if by instinct. And you can't help falling in love with the sights, the sounds, the smells, it's magical. I'm architectural designer Charlie Luxton, and in this series, I'll get a unique view of some of Britain's most fantastic coastal properties. I'll design fantasy houses in some incredible seaside locations. Up here would just be my dream spot to put a house and meet the people who've realized that ambition to have a home by the sea. Wow, what a view. Here we are. Wow, look at this. On a rough day, you get the spray coming up to the first floor windows. Like Captain yeah, you Ahab. Get the sea, sea spray. In today's programme, I'm heading to Devon to find out what makes it Britain's coastal property hotspot. Here, homes create new waves in seaside design, turn estuary views into infinity pools, and transport you to a whole new world. That's great. I'd expect to see that in the canyons in LA. Today's journey takes me along the stunning south coast of Devon. It boasts areas of outstanding natural beauty, sandy beaches, the seaside resorts of the English Riviera, and the most incredible wide estuaries that wind their way for miles from the sea inland. From Hope Cove in the gorgeous South Hams up to the X estuary on the county's southeastern shore, I'll be visiting some fascinating properties. The first port of call on my journey is the harbour town of Brixham. Where there's a wonderful mix of working trawlers and resting tourists. And you can see why it attracts so many visitors. It's a picture postcard working harbour town with a bustling quay and brightly coloured houses winding their way up the hillside. But there's more to seaside architecture here than these traditional homes. Devon is awash with new, big and bold coastal properties. But the contemporary house I'm on my way to visit definitely doesn't like to shout about itself. As I arrived here, I saw a property which, from the sea, looked incredible. But from the land, it really doesn't give much away. And that's just the kind of optical illusion its owners, Richard and Jenny Beale, set out to create. Hello, Richard. Hello. Hello, Jenny. How are you? Hi. Very well, thanks. This is lovely. <laughs> I love this view. This is fantastic, isn't it? Oh, it's great, yes. That's an incredible idea, just that you walk in and all you see is sea. Yes, the architect was very keen that um, you got a really good entrance. Strong really connection to that really ocean, strong. to that view. Absolutely. Mm. I mean, yeah. it's very interesting because 
It's almost like there's, there is no house here. It's like no, a stealth yeah. house. It's stealth, it invisible, integrated completely into the landscape. And was that a key part of your brief? Oh, yes. That is great. That must make you smile every time you come home. It, it does. does, yes. But to appreciate the genius of its design, you need to approach it from the sea. It's then the house merges into the rocks it's built into. Its architecture meets geology. Wow, that is beautiful, isn't it? Yes. What a location. Richard, who worked in IT, and Jenny, a retired management consultant, have created a four-bedroom home in a design style that could be described as covert contemporary. What I really like is as you look back down the house, it almost looks like a geological formation. It's like rock-like. Yes, instead of a straight line, or even just a broken line, we've got this jagged edge. And in fact, the architect said, when I questioned him about this, I said, why are all, there all these breaks in it. Why does it keep going off at different angles? <laughs> and he said, we like jagged. Okay. Which is fixed in my mind forever because it's, it captures the idea perfectly. Sounds like you need a t-shirt. We, <laughs> like we like jagged. Do you like jagged now? <laughs> yes. Oh, we do. Yeah, we, do. we do. We do. It's, it's just right. It's so Jaggedism. Much it's so Go much, jaggedism. <laughs> it's, it's so much more interesting. It is. Now, you're absolutely right. I mean, you don't get straight lines in nature. So this broken down jagged kind of characteristic really just helps the building disappear. That's, it. That's exactly what we like. We don't like things looking too brash, too in your face. We'd be happy if it was invisible completely. It almost looks like the rock was here and you've just sort of made a little bit of changes to it and inhabited it. It feels very natural like that. The house is a shining example of how to take inspiration from the coastal landscape. Hardy plants that thrive on the nearby cliffs sit naturally on the split-level living roofs. While the stone walls mimic a ruined military building just along the headland. If you go up and look at the fort and the beautiful Napoleonic fort that was built, um, you can see these huge stone structures. And here you have again a stone structure. Uh, you know, inspired partly by that idea. So actually, the architect saw that and sort of took some of those ideas and put them into here? Yes. 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 Absolutely, that's, mm. that's the idea. I'm keen to find out more about this secretive home. Starting with the open plan living area downstairs. Beautiful. The blue lias stone, which dates back to the Jurassic period, is as dominant inside as out. Richard and Jenny have kept the colour palette simple, restrained to a single muted colour, so nothing competes with the feature stonework. So this is the sitting room, combined with library and TV and... Beautiful a, fire, isn't and it? And the double-sided fireplace, which is obviously wonderful in winter, burning logs. And you've still got this incredible view. Yeah. Yes. I mean, how do you feel about it, like, mid-winter with the fire on and, like, a storm raging against the window? How, it feels like a kind of a cave. Yes, Some of the it best does. Time. It's wonderful. Mm. It's, it's the best time here, I think. Because it's really nice that you've got the stone on sort of the three sides behind you, so you sort of really do yes. <laughs> kind of like a very kind of sophisticated Neolithic man, isn't it? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> There's some really nice detailing as well where the plasterwork meets this lovely stone. Ah, now you've picked up something which the architect was very keen on, which is the shadow gap. Oh, yes. The join between the smooth ceiling <laughs> and the rough stone. And, you know, you don't just put the two together with a bit of sealant. Yes. You have this perfect line of the shadow gap. The endless glazing gives uninterrupted views throughout the house. That's great, isn't it? Bath with a view. And thanks to technology, even the most private of rooms can appreciate the scenery. What I'm going to do is open the door and ask you to go 
Okay, I'll inside. go inside go and stand over there and look out. Ooh, and he, nice you go bathroom. in. Right. And now watch closely because. Oh. It's great, isn't it? Nice. <laughs> there you are. Look at that. So you have privacy or you have a view. At the flick of a switch, the smart glass transforms from translucent to transparent. Nice. <laughs> it's a novelty that. that, for me at least, never wears thin. But in this home, no one misses out on the high-spec gadgets, not even the couple's pets. Most people ruin a door or a window putting a cat flap in it. Pointless when you can build your own cat tunnel. So there's a concrete tunnel running right through the outside wall. Bend well, there. there. Yeah, down there. Oh, I see. That's it. So in winter, when the doors are shut, they're in and out of the tunnel. Yes. In and out of the yes. tunnel. For me, this house is a perfect mix of the elemental and the sophisticated. I bet your friends like coming to stay, don't they? Oh, yes. They do. <laughs> Knocking we, the door down. We, we, we love them coming to stay, too. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. After visiting Richard and Jenny's hidden gem of a home, my Devon journey has really taken off. In the next leg, I'll be heading east to see a traditional cottage with an interior style that's all shook up. A bit of New England and a bit of kind of French Provençal with a bit of shabby chic thrown in there as well. So it's like just a lots of white. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I'm impressed by a modernist home and its design that works on every level. You really get a sense of how the roof runs from one side of the building right through to the other. It's incredibly it's dynamic, it's isn't it? It's amazing. I'm in South Devon exploring sweeping golden beaches and meandering tidal estuaries that make this coastline such a special place to live. It has gorgeous landscapes and a wealth of natural wonders. And generations of architects and engineers have done their best to match its beauty in the built environment. The next home on my itinerary is in Limpston, a small village on the banks of the X estuary in the east of the county. On a calm day like today, Limpston's a tranquil, sleepy place. I'm here to meet Nancy Crookshank, whose estuary cottage is by definition as close to a seaside home as you can get. Traditionally built for fishermen or chandlers, these pretty two up, two downs are now the kind of holiday home many hanker for. And I'm keen to see how it's been adapted for the 21st century. So how did you end up in this beautiful place? By accident, in actual fact. A girlfriend of mine owned the house and uh, invited us to stay for a weekend. We came down, my husband and I, two kids, and just loved it. So cool to thank her. And she said that she was thinking of selling it. And uh, did I know anyone who would be interested? And uh, immediately, without thinking, my husband piped up and said, we'll buy it. And this was the first time we had ever been. Did she know you were looking or were you looking? We weren't looking. We were not looking for a house. Do you think your friends set you up? <laughs> <laughs> it was like a very elaborate sort of viewing appointment or something. It's really smart, whatever, because <laughs> it works. I mean, that is right on the waterfront, isn't it? I mean, you don't get any closer than that. I think living here, it's all about the sort of relationship with the water, being close by. You can have days like today where it's incredibly calm. It's almost eerie um, to be Isn't out it? here. It's beautiful. I mean, it's like a, you can hardly see where the sea ends and the Absolutely. sky starts. It's really very, very beautiful. And there are days when you come out of here and it is wild. The waves are crashing in. 
Um, it can feel very, very different. And I think that's something that I love about it, is that it has a very different character at different times. And when the weather turns, Nancy's home isn't so much on the front line of the village's sea defences, it is the front line. Look at this gate. So you really Flood do... Gates. That is industrial, yeah. isn't yeah. it? They're essential. There are about 10 people in the village who look after the floodgates. It's their job. Um, it's their job. They come, take the padlocks off, close it up. So occasionally I'll arrive at the house and the floodgate is closed. Um, and you know then that the water is going to either be up very, very high that evening or it's, you know, you look just over the top and, wow, it's, it's right there. It's um, up the front of the oh, gate. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You better hope that all, it, you know. at least one of the ten is in the town by <laughs> the time comes, because it, yes, you know, exactly. it doesn't wait, does it? Well, I've heard Hopefully about Ty, it doesn't really are. wait for anyone, does it? <laughs> well, should we go and have a look inside? Absolutely, come on in. Nancy, who runs her own beauty business in London, bought the 200-year-old cottage as a cosy seaside escape for her family. The interior design has certainly taken its cue from the habitat just outside the window. From ornamental wading birds to nautical motifs, it creates a link between the waterside rooms and their surroundings. Whether it's low tide or high tide. Wow, look at that view. I mean, you get a sense of it from outside, but somehow just being in here and having it framed like that, that is stunning. And when the tide's in, I always feel like with these windows open, it's a little bit like being on a boat. Yeah. Yeah, 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 there's no connection to ground because there's nothing yeah. in front of you. Absolutely. You can just hear the water lapping. Lapping against the boats. And the, that, that lovely sound you yeah. get from the rigging of the boats, you know, that Absolutely. sort of little yeah, noises. Ting, 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 ting. ting, yeah. ting, ting. Yeah. yeah, it's very nice. Upstairs, there are three bedrooms squeezed into this 140 square metre cottage. That's nice, isn't it? But the generous master bedroom, combined with Nancy's interior styling, makes it feel more spacious than it really is. The feeling of the house that we really wanted to create was, I guess, somewhere between a bit of New England and a bit of kind of French Provençal, with a bit of kind of shabby chic thrown in there as well. So like just cocktail. lots of white. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The wood that all ties in together keeps it very kind of calm. I feel it very physically when I walk in here. I think my kids feel it as well, that it's just, you know, low-key, family time, you know, and it's, it's really a breath of fresh air. I can imagine it's quite a good place to sort of have thoughts, to sort of get away from it and just think deeply. Nancy's been able to create her dream retreat here, all too aware how fate has given her a helping hand. I bet you're really glad you said, OK, we'll go down there for the weekend, all those years ago. We really fell in love, actually. We really did fall in love with the coastline, the whole area, and the house itself. I can, I can see why. You know, right now, this is just perfect. As more of us crave coastal living, homes like Nancy's in prime locations can command high prices. It's estimated that being by an estuary, offering sea views but shelter from harsh weather, can add a whopping 85% to the value of a home compared to a similar property inland. And nowhere has that impact been felt more than here in Sulcombe. The renovation and building boom has pushed some of the property prices here into the multi-million pound bracket. Sulcombe's a mecca for sailors, and where there's yachts, there's brass. And the demand for homes in this picturesque harbour town has seen it overtake Dorset's exclusive sandbanks as Britain's most expensive coastal area. It's properties which overlook the wonderful Kingsbridge estuary that can really command premium prices. 
For rooms with a view, then this three-bedroom duplex apartment will take some beating. As well as a plethora of panoramic windows, there are two balconies from which to soak up the scenery. The value on these vistas? One and a quarter million pounds. Characterful older properties are still in demand. Inside the solid stone walls of this Victorian Baptist chapel, there's a contemporary four-bedroom apartment up for sale. There are great views over the water, but at one and a half million pounds, church mice need not apply. Now in Solcombe, there are semis and there are semis. With its floor-to-ceiling windows, every inch of this five-bedroom, ultra-contemporary house has been designed to embrace its fabulous position above the estuary. The seemingly endless glazing make it a light-filled space. And strangely, that's how your wallet will feel when you've paid the two and three-quarter million pound asking price. My travels around the Devon coast has taken me to another of the county's estuaries. This time it's where the River Dart meets the English Channel. Its busy waterways has everything, from pricey yachts to tourist paddle steamers. While the hillsides are crowded with properties, clambering to get a glimpse of the estuary below. Just over there is the beautiful town of Dartmouth, and I'm on the quieter side of the estuary in Kingsweir. And I'm here to see a really unique coastal property, just over this hill. From the tree-lined driveway, it's possible to get the odd glimpse of the home I'm visiting, set deep amongst the ferns and lush foliage. But push through the branches and the truly spectacular Kiwana Hall greets you. With its zinc butterfly roof and acres of glass, this home couldn't be more 21st century. But its origins and styling actually date back to the swinging 60s. It's incredibly sort of un-English, un-British in so many ways. I'd expect to see that in uh, sort of the canyons in LA. Today it's owned by Gordon Craig, who is a local GP, and Tony Pithers, a former retail manager. And they've agreed to show me round their retro-inspired home. We were down here on a very wet February um, weekend and we went into the estate agents. We were just having a look and down in the window. And we looked at the window and we thought, wow, that place looks really unusual. Yeah. And I said, that looks like something out of Los Angeles. We got about halfway up the drive and I thought, I want to live here. I hadn't <laughs> even seen the house, really. I hadn't been inside it. I said, I really want to live here. This is it. This is the house. The style of this gleaming palace of glass and zinc takes its cue from the original home that once stood on the site. Built in 1962, the modernist architecture of Kiwana Hall certainly caused a stir. It was as if the Thunderbirds Tracy Island had descended on South Devon. What was it like when you first bought it? It was very dilapidated, needed a lot of work doing to it. Um, it leaked, the electrics blew every time you plugged the kettle in, <laughs> and it was... A bit like camping out, because we were here for three years living in the old house. Really? Yeah. So you moved into it as the unreconstructed 1960s building? Yeah. Transforming the run-down home took two years and a fair bit of cash, too. £600,000, to be precise. But from where I'm standing, I'd say it's certainly been worth the investment. The exterior's an explosion of angles and sharp shapes. But later, it's the home's interior design that blows me away. What a fantastic space. 
and how living on the sun-kissed Devon coast fuels a photographer's creativity. It's the smell, it's the sound, it's the, it's the air. It's inspiring on every level. I'm in South Devon, a place with properties as attractive as its shoreline. From a modern house that seems to emerge organically from the sea, to a cosy fisherman's cottage right on the water's edge, it's a place rich in architectural gems. My travels have taken me a short distance from the shimmering dark estuary to the dense wooded valley above the village of Kingsweir. I'm visiting Kawana Hall, a far out home reimagining 1960s modernist architecture. Owned by Tony Pithers and Gordon Craig, it's a home that's more in keeping with the Hollywood Hills than the South Hams. Should we have a look around? Yeah, of course. Lovely. Follow me. The exterior is an explosion of angles, and I can't wait to see inside. What a fantastic space. That's great. Tony and Gordon have used arrow straight pine planks to clad the sloping ceiling. These boards run the full 30 metre length of the main space and draw the eye along a visual journey of discovery. I love the level changes and the way it kind of, sort of slightly out of kilter with the roof. Originally, of course, there were lots of little rooms here, so it wasn't one big open space. And actually, the roof ran the other way, so the slats of the roof ran that way. OK. And then as soon as we opened it up, we realised that you needed to run the wood this way, so your line Draw of sight... Draw you yeah. down. Exactly. Um, it was a nightmare for the builders. They hated it. You know. <laughs> the slanted roof also helps divide what is effectively one big room into distinct functional areas. From the ultra-modern kitchen on one side of the incline to the master bedroom suite, high on the other. This is a new home, but one that's been very faithful to its predecessor. So what was your brief to the architect? We just said, what do you think would be good here? And he came back and said to us, well... You know, knock it down. Knock it down and, and actually build it in the similar style on the same footprint and keep to the original design as much as possible. No, because, you know, this the 60s architecture is great, you know, yeah. actually. When it's done right, it's yeah. really great, and I think we don't value it enough. And it's really nice when you go, you know what? There was a real kind of creative flair, and yeah. we're going to respect that, and we're going to work with it and, make, yeah. you know, improve it a bit, but yes. stick well, to the plan. Tony and Gordon didn't just celebrate Kawana Hall's architectural heritage, though. They've preserved some of it, too. So this staircase is fantastic. This is original. Is so it? this was basically here, yeah. It was covered in carpet, actually, so carpet. we... <laughs> Can you imagine it? Covered in carpet. You really get a sense of how the roof runs from one side of the building right through to the other. Incredibly it's, dynamic, it's, isn't it? It's amazing, it's really great. It really connects the spaces. The unique shape of the house means there's one room that defies gravity. Clinging precariously to the main house is the ensuite bathroom. Cantilevering from the chimney, this room could have been more vertigo inducing if Tony's initial plans had come to fruition. So, originally, we had to hope to put a glass floor in here. Can you imagine that? That would have been really... <laughs> what, here? A glass floor? I, I find glass floors slightly... Eaky. Scary. Yeah. <laughs> they are, like, you go, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you've got this view, surely that's... Well, we got the window, which 
does as well. You know, we can still parade ourselves in front of it if we want to. <laughs> as well as the couple's revealing ensuite, the three guest bedrooms at the opposite end of the house also have fabulous outlooks. We've got two at the back, left and right, and then you've got this one over here, and this one overlooks the pool. Wow, what a great view. Isn't it oh, wonderful? Look at that! Amazing, isn't it? That's lovely. And it's not just Gordon and Tony who get to appreciate Kiwana Hall. They also run a boutique B&B, utilising their three spare bedrooms. Wow, now that, that's my kind of B&B. There you are. That is my kind of B&B. Beautiful. You get the sun in the morning and the terraces get it in the evening in the height of the summer. So it's, re it's been really well designed, which is one of the reasons why we've left it, more or less. Sure. We haven't moved it or jiggled about with it. Just sort of embroidered and yeah. built upon what was here. Yeah. With the pair in charge of a posh b and B, I'm keen to sample a fry-up. Oh, they smell lovely. No full English at this time of day, though. Fresh scallops with chorizos on the menu instead. In the 60s and 70s, this was known as a party house. And who am I to stand in the way of tradition? We were just about to knock it down. We had 250 people here in a September evening outside, we had barbecue stations, band at the end of the pool. We had a chandelier hanging in the middle of, over the middle of the pool. You really went for it. And we really went for it. What I think is genius about the original design and what you've done with it, it feels very homely. I mean, it's, it's uncompromisingly modern, but it feels like a really nice, really nice house just to live in. It's just a very comfortable space and comfortable place to be. Thank you very much for having me and, and showing me around. Right. It's a lovely house. It's been great You're to be here. You're very welcome. Cheers. Cheers. Good food, good wine, and the chance to soak up the hazy summer sunshine. I'm starting to understand what draws people to this part of Devon. And it's the outstanding quality of light, especially as the sun sinks low, which proves irresistible to artists who come to live and work by the sea. Fine art photographer Deborah Shank is one of them. Creating images drawn from the natural beauty she finds here in Hope Cove. I've just had a longing to live by the sea, and it, it was it was transformational. I think from even the first week of moving here, just um, a sense of well-being. It's the space to think. It's the space to be creative, and somewhere like this is. Um, it's, it's, it's just, it's space, it's fabulous. As well as her photographs of natural seascapes, Deborah also creates compositions from what she finds on the seashore. When you're taking photographs, some of it is the impulse of the moment of what you see and you're inspired by. Stones, shells, twigs. <laughs> feathers. <laughs> so you'd have pockets full of stuff and then I usually go back um, to the studio and photograph those. But it's also, I think, it's the inspiration. It's the peace of mind of being somewhere like this. It's inspiring on every level. Deborah's studio is at her rental house, a short stroll from the cove below. And as her art is influenced by the sea, her home is influenced by her art. 